and uh, oh, do you think it's do you think it's Julian and yeah, Sophie? Can't tell. Can you tell a little? It looks like a white boat. I think it might be a different boat. No, it might be them. Hey, they're in blue. Regardless, we should say hi. What are the odds? We're not alone out here. Sailing vessel headed eastbound. Sailing vessel headed eastbound. This is sailing vessel Eva to your nine o'clock. Good morning to you. Hey there. How you doing? Thank <laughs> you. Just call to say hi. Yeah, this is Sailing Vessel Eva. Any chance your boat is Lilirum? Yes, that's correct. Uh, give me a switch on uh, channel uh, 17. It's Julian! 17. That's so exciting! Hi, guys. How are you? Doing great. How are you guys doing? A bit tired and a bit complicated, but uh, that's all right. We we try to, uh, to understand the, the current. But, uh, it's okay for you. It's, uh, it's good. Yeah, kind of the same story. Uh, we're just trying to get over to the uh, that southeast bound current. I think we'll hit, head on this tack for a little longer. Then we'll probably head on the same when you're on southeast, and then maybe do one more tack just to get over more east to where that uh, southeast bound current is. Yeah, this is Brett and Jade from Eva. We have uh, Dingo and Penny, the dogs. What? Is it Brett and Jade? Yeah, and you're Julia and Sophie. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Brett. Uh, I didn't recognize your voice. <laughs> it's so strange to see you here. And I, I was sure you had a uh, <laughs> no, that's okay. That's really funny. Sailing lessons with Jade for today is all about ocean currents. So there are current systems that go through the Atlantic. One second. Would you say there are current current systems? There are current current systems. Yeah, the current current system that we're talking about is currents that are going from east to west across the North Atlantic. And the area of the ocean we're in, there's kind of like a loop of it. And so what we're doing is we're positioning our boat to tack in that curve. It's like a snake bend. We're gonna tack through that curve so that we can utilize the ocean current. So how I want you guys to think about the current system is you're at the airport and you are walking and you are going at your walking pace and you're making it to your terminal and then you step onto the human conveyor belt and you're still walking the same pace but now you're going twice as fast. So that is what it's like for the boat. Basically we're putting our boat on the ocean conveyor belt and it's gonna make us go faster even though we're sailing with the same speed with the wind technically but like our distance moving is going to be a lot faster so that is what we are up to today and i want to know if you also call it a human conveyor belt apparently i made that one up but <laughs> i would call them <laughs> moving sidewalk human conveyor belt slingshot. what would you call them the boat slingshot. a slingshot a slingshot what do you call the human conveyor belts at the airport? Walking sidewalk? Walking sidewalk? sidewalk moving walking, sidewalk? Walking sidewalk? <laughs> Can we just all call them human conveyor belts? I mean, that's what it is. It was really cool seeing Lillian and Sophie. It was. They were really close, too. <laughs> they got really close, yeah. They came up kind of behind us. And the swell's big enough that we just did not see them very far off. And then, and then they disappeared really fast they too. They disappeared really fast, yeah. Just goes to show how fast even a big boat with sails out. Yeah, and they came right. Well, and it was right at sunrise. Yeah. But like right enough after sunrise that we didn't see their lights. I can kind of see their mast there. Can you? Because they know where to look. Right. Really cool. Especially because we're definitely not like as the bird flies to Bermuda. We're way off track. Yeah. So it just goes to show like we're reading the weather and cutting into the wind just the same as everybody else. Well, and we were headed in different directions. We we're headed northeast and they're headed southeast. And yeah. we just happened to crisscross. It's really fun. This is mostly for Jade's mom. She always gets on me about sunscreen on my face, so. Because she this, loves this, you. This is for you. We're on a heading directly towards the Titanic. And it's, what the sea temperature is. 
The sea temp is 83 degrees right now. 83 degrees Fahrenheit for the sea temperature right now. And so warm out. I remember watching the movie Titanic and thinking it was unrealistic because they were just in like dresses, like, like not jackets. Yeah, they, I was like, there's icebergs. It's cold. Apparently not. But I don't think we'll. It's how many is it? One line of latitude higher than us right now, uh, or two? I think it's at 45. out. Hello. Hello. I'm just sitting here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean working and online shopping at the same time. What? You're shopping? So, fun update. Our friend's Adventure Locker messaged us. It's not a fun update. It's fun for us because it's, 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 it's not on our boat. So, they said, was it this morning that it happened? Yeah. This morning their autopilot went out. And uh, there was a comment a couple of days ago that said everybody that crosses the Atlantic loses autopilot. So far, of the three boats that we are in contact with regularly, it's two out of three. So it's not that I'm hoping Lily Rom loses their autopilot, oh, but I hope they don't. no, I really don't want them to. They're kind of having a rough passage, it sounds yeah. like. Um, anyways, yeah, they lost their autopilot, and apparently it's an electrical problem within like the brains within the control unit and there's no fix send it back to raymarine is kind of what the consensus is so they are now basically halfway with no autopilot luckily it's looking like the weather is going to be getting better for hand steering um we're all kind of right here about to make this turn southeast and take that current southeast and then in a couple days the wind should slowly start shifting around to downwind which should make life easier uh but it's just the two of them, so I, I feel for them. This morning I've been playing around with some sail shapes, tightening and loosening the, the boom bang, with, I don't remember what that's called, the main sheet, and just kind of playing around with some different shapes. And I'm really liking what we got going on right now. Just kind of playing with the twist. Um, yeah, the boat seems really happy. We're still really reefed, but with being so reefed, we're still super balanced and making really good progress. We're doing about six knots. Another day, another episode exporting. I'm pretty sure that is the ghost boat of the Titanic haunting this area of the ocean. Well, it's been, it's been an eventful day of boats. We've seen two boats today. Wow. Ayana, there's another boat. Another boat. Yeah. Last night, Ayana was on shift and the depth sounder started pinging at like 150, 120, something like that. We had a whale swimming under us or something. <laughs> that was terrifying. <laughs> I got you. I had to grab my ankle. <laughs> Brett will always reach out and grab our ankles while we're standing right here. Now I see why it's so exhilarating. It's freaky. Yeah. The thing got me. Anyway. We've been really chill today. It's four o'clock. Yeah, and Ayana's just waking up. She was up all night. I slept a lot today. We edited the video, saw a couple of boats. That's all we've done today. That's it. It yeah. has been a really, really day. chill day. Very mellow. You had a good day. I was pretty seasick today. Yeah, I had a great day. I, like, I hung out and cleaned and seasick. listened to my book for a while. I feel like it's put me to sleep. Kind of got lulled to sleep. Yeah, just because I wasn't feeling great. So I just wanted to sleep all day. Yeah, and you just, I mean, I honestly slept all day. I know, she's still not emerged yet, but I think she's getting there. That's good. The dogs went potty first thing this morning, so they've had a great day. Yeah, they, they 
I feel like are fully acclimated now. They've yeah. been doing the zoomies, they were wrestling last night. They're actually acclimated enough now, obviously like for a few days, stay, stay eight. But now they're acclimated well enough that we have to like direct their playing where they won't fall because right. they get too excited. They're comfortable enough now. They're that... pretty clever, but I always worry. I think maybe they'd be fine if I just left them alone, but I don't leave them alone <laughs> to make their own Hel decisions. You helicopter. I definitely do. I'm like, okay, let's wrestle over here. <laughs> it's like my mom used to always send us out to play on the tramp, the trampoline out back. Yeah. Like, let's go wrestle outside. Yeah, you know, designated wrestling places where there's less likely to be an injury. Yep. She lives! Oh, the sun! <laughs> <laughs> you woke up just in time to see the sun before it goes down. <laughs> just barely. Oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> like Katie's happy to see you. Hi, I just saw you. You were just cuddling me. <laughs> That's why I couldn't get up. <laughs> what a day, huh? Good morning, dude. Like, I know, caught on the line. looks just like me when I woke up. <laughs> like, what's happening? <laughs> oh, man. Day eight. Day eight. Do you have eight braids today? No, I don't. Oh, man. <laughs> I have seven, so. But they're really cool. They are really cool. Is that day seven braid? Yeah, this is day seven braid. Nice. It's a good one. That is a good one. Probably one of my favorites. For sure. As is pretty typical, Ayana woke up and immediately started feeding everyone, <laughs> including herself. This is actually pretty hilarious. I didn't know this was happening until I walked in. <laughs> you want me? <laughs> Did you want some? I do now. <laughs> I got coffee, soup, she's, ice cream. It's really quite the combination. She's warming up soup, but that's taking too long, so ice cream. <laughs> and Dingo's interested. It's a Maricone dream. I don't know if I know what that is. Is it good? Yeah, it's really good. That wasn't a big enough scoop. Well, it was plenty for now. Mm, that's cool. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> mm. I was like, what's the big deal? It's just normal I on it. I was trying to figure out what they're laughing about. <laughs> Typ typical Tuesday. Like, what's he that? came down to like tell them that I was like so awesome. Like, wake up, make you guys food. I'm in here like dogging ice cream. Mm. <laughs> but you are making food. You're just also feeding your face. Mm -hmm. No shame. Mm -hmm. I always have such a weird combos going on. It's true. You had chips with something the other chips day. Chips was also with, with blueberry, blueberry pancakes. With blueberry pancakes. A very uh, broad palate. Yeah. Wait, I'm basically... Or you're pregnant. <laughs> Does he have water? Do you have some water? Does anybody have a brand of non-spillable water bowls? I heard... Somebody commenting about those. So anybody have one that you We should just make a little gimbaled one. Definitely. Who is Joe? Why is he on our Good question. These are all good questions. Over here discussing who Joe is and why we want a cup of him. One of Ayana's and I's favorite pastimes, and Rapid Sasha, is comparing the West Coast things to the East Coast things, because Brett and I grew up on the West Coast, and it's a different world over there, like the phrases and like... Yeah, we're always saying things that we don't understand. Yeah, different words. And I feel like Ayana and I, we're only three months apart in age, so we had like very similar childhoods, very similar yeah. like personalities growing up. So then, like, to the, compare it. the differences are really just the East Coast and West Coast things. So mm -hmm. it's like the only differences. Yeah, we're like a really good control factor in this yeah. whole experiment. Yeah, it's like if you put twins on opposite sides in of the country. This grand experiment of life. It's pretty nice out here. What? Oh, is your face okay? You just headbutted the camera. Go get Joy. Go get Joy. Get it. 
Bring it to me. Go get your own toy. This one. Because I'm wearing Yaba. Yeah. You're wearing Yaba, I'm wearing Uma. What are you wearing? Probably spirit animal. Probably. No. Must no. Mustang. Yeah, Mustang. <laughs> Sailing Uma makes some great shirts. I don't know if they're still using the same company, but the material is really good for tropical weather. It's really light, like super thin and soft. Did you get this one for 50% off? <laughs> I know I cropped this one probably a little too short, I think. It was really hot one day in the Bahamas. There's no wind, and I'm just like. We put that cushion there so they can get on and off the bed easier because it's really slippery going from the carpet to the bed. Like that, this transition is dangerous. So now they have that cushion there, and he loves it. We've made it to the top of the current, the northeast current. So now we're going to attack and we're going to start taking the southeast current south. East. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Nice job, that was a good flex. Thanks, I was working out earlier. Okay, dear patrons, we appreciate you guys so much and I'm sorry I haven't burned your names into the wood. The last few days have been a little bit too... <laughs> for, for using the wood burner. <laughs> so um, the weather forecast is looking like it's going to calm down and be a little bit, well, not be upwind starting in the next day or two. So three. I will be do or three. <laughs> I will do them though. That's what I'm saying is that we appreciate you. You are not forgotten. Your names are going to go down. They're going to go on the wall. And yeah, so everybody knew who's been signing up the last few days. We really appreciate your support. And I want you guys to know that we appreciate you and the burning will come. And we also filmed a Q&A for everybody. So that is going to be next right now in the video. So enjoy that. Hey Brett, show everybody what I did for your braids. I can't see them, so you'll have to tell me what you think. Viking. Like a Viking. It's day what? Four? I'm gonna have one, <laughs> you have two, four in your three, hair now. four. I gotta day four. The, I gotta do the other side. But in the meantime... Pretty soon it's gonna be day eight. Yeah. I think I'm gonna give you nine. So when you wake up in the morning, you'll have nine. Is it actually day... It is day eight. Wow, it's gonna be day nine tomorrow? Yeah. Holy cow. The long pass. Wow. What's the longest our bet we've done? Eight days? Nine. Nine? Yeah. We've done nine? I think, I think nine on the way. But that included us being anchored waiting for our Zark basic to start up. So, yeah. Cool. Pretty soon tomorrow to be the longest we've ever been at sea. Yeah. And you, Penny. Anyway, we didn't really film much today because we were all really tired. So we figure we'll fill in the rest of this video with the rest of the Q&A questions. Yeah. Well, I give Brett his ninth grade. <sighs> so you want to start us off, babe? Sure. Sun's right. going down. How did you potty train the dogs? Uh, I'm sure, I assume they're referencing like how we trained them to go on the boat. Yeah. I mean, they were already potty trained to go to the bathroom. Yeah. So then we just told them to go on the boat. Yeah, we tried, we initially tried getting one of like the grass mats and we went and like put it under Penny and had her pee on it on land and then put it on the boat and had her do that. And yeah, that, that is how we did it. We tried that. 
but well, just, that, that got them to go on the boat, but we just decided against the yeah. grass mat eventually because it was just gross. It was disgusting. And it was shedding plastic everywhere. Yeah. So we kept getting like little shreds of plastic that would blow away in the wind, and we don't want plastic to get in the ocean. So we opted for them just going on the deck, and that's been what's worked the best for us. Yeah. Yeah, because what was happening is they would go on the mat, and then inevitably some would spill onto the deck anyway. Right. And so it was like, okay, well, if we're having to clean the deck, then why are we picking up this disgusting grass thing that stinks? So it was just like, yeah. So now they just go on like the sides of the deck, like on the, the walkways, on the gunnels, and we just wash it down. Why did you choose your new instruments? Because the old ones didn't work at all. Uh, well, not why do we replace them, but why do we choose probably B&G? Yeah, uh, we chose B&G. It was really between B&G and Garmin. We kind of had a falling out with Garmin. I think we had a contract, right? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we we did. a non-disclosure with them and everything. So we might not be able to talk about this right now, then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How did you convince your spouse to buy a boat? I don't know who you're asking because I don't think either of us convinced... Maybe that's why they worded it that way. Yeah. Yeah, neither of us convinced either one to buy a boat. I don't think we... We rarely convince the other person to do anything. Yeah. It's like we're both in or it doesn't happen. Yeah. I think if you have to convince your spouse to do it, it's probably going to be a bad time. <laughs> Just... I, yeah. You think? I, yeah, I think if... You have to convince them yeah, to. Yeah, you're like pressuring them into something. Yeah, but, it, but, if it, but if it's just like you have to get them out of their comfort zone and help them see that it could be cool, then sure. But. I mean, I guess you showed me La Vagabond's videos. You're yeah. like, hey, look at this cool couple doing this cool thing. Yeah, but is that called convincing you? Like, yeah. we'll say, going back to the B&G thing, this is one of my favorite things, is being able to do this. I love being able to see the instruments from my phone. Put them in night mode. All better. Why no drone footage? Please don't lose the drone. I think you just answered it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the boat's been going up and down so much, and that's the hardest part. The boat's just healed, and we're just cruising along. Oops, oops, sorry. Good save. Then it's fine, but the problem is the boat's going up and down, and so trying to catch the drone when it's doing that is just really tough. So if it calms down, I would love to get the drone up and get some footage, but until it does that, no drone footage. It's not worth the risk. Yeah. Plans to travel to Denmark, France, New Zealand, Australia? I mean, we want to go everywhere. Um, so, plans? That's kind of a rough word for us. <laughs> we kind of have stopped planning. Just, we've decided we like travel more when we kind of just show up and, I mean, obviously we have to plan some for paperwork, but we really enjoy just kind of spending as much, wow, I am not, saying this very well. We have no plans. Once we get to the Azores, we have no plans after that. We're just gonna go where the wind blows us and go where we want. And if we meet somebody from Denmark and they're like, you should really go to this spot, then maybe we will. Yep. But like, like we wanna go everywhere, we wanna see everything, but if nothing is planned right now. Yep. Um, but we do really wanna go to like all those places. I don't, know. I don't know very much about France. That's never been like high on my list, but I'm happy to learn. Yeah, a lot of history. And our friends, uh, Julian and Sophie, have invited us to come stay at their chateau in the French in the Alps. Alps. They're the ones that we've been able to see them on the horizon almost all day. Yeah, we talked to them on the radio. Was that yesterday? No, that was today. Was that today? Yeah, this morning. This morning. They're great. They're oh, yeah, that was like first thing this morning. I was still like asleep. So that's an example of like not having plans for travel. But like they just invited us to come stay in the Alps, so I think we'll probably do that at some point. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like that would be really cool. Have you considered a solar oven? Nope. Solar ovens take a lot of time. But if we're talking like solar powered, like from our solar panels. A solar powered like induction oven? We have considered induction. Uh, but right now we do not have enough solar capacity to sustain that. Yeah. But how we would like to have enough solar yeah but but a direct solar oven like the i don't know what they're called just like solar oven no we've, we've never considered that yeah i think i don't know that they actually really make much sense on a boat are you ever concerned the dogs might jump off yeah not necessarily jump off but fall off yeah um the dinghy definitely the dinghy yeah like if there's dolphins or sharks or rays or something like that that they're really curious about 
there's definitely concern that they would jump off to they just... They both have jumped off after sea creatures. They have. So we have to watch them very out, off of the dinghy. Yep. Um, neither of them have ever jumped off of the big bow after anything. Nope. But we're hasn't, very cautious. I say, hasn't Penny fallen off the back ones? We allowed Penny to fall off a few months ago in the Bahamas. We allowed her to fall off after the bat, off the bat um, while we were reeling in a barracuda because we wanted her to learn that she needs to settle down when we're fishing, otherwise she'll fall in. Yep. And it was very effective. It was. But like, let it be known, the boat wasn't moving. We, the no, boat we are an anchor. The, the boat was completely yeah. not moving. <laughs> otherwise, um, we definitely would not have done that. But yeah, we are worried about the dogs falling off and stuff. That's why whenever we catch a fish or a bird, we tether. <laughs> Bird. You know, whenever that happens. Yeah, I know. I mean, it happened. It's happened as many times as we've caught a fish on this trip. Let's be honest. <laughs> you have a good Right point. now, we got a 50 50 chance of bird or fish. Yeah, based on our track record. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we tethered the dogs so that they don't. So they can't. They can't, yeah. Do you have a sextant? Nope. We do not. Do you have paper charts? Nope. Can you chart your course if all electronics fail? I mean, we could follow a we heading. Could, you know, say we know we could do a heading. We could find the North Star and go east of that. We right. could follow the sun. We wouldn't need the sun or the stars. We have compasses. I know, but I'm saying like if for whatever reason all of those. Yeah. We so would, we, we would be okay. Yeah, we would at least find land eventually. Yeah, Icelandic star. Yeah. Oh, you could see the sun through the clouds. All right. Yeah. Perfect. We um we would not. I don't know if we would be able to get to the Azores. No, I mean, maybe. I we, we would hit land eventually, I think though. I we would miss the Azores. Probably. They're a pretty small target, honestly. Yeah, but we would make it <laughs> We would make it to land. We would yeah. be fine. Is it spooky to sail at night? Sometimes, yes. But not always. Yeah, so I, you, go ahead. Sorry. I, I get unsettled sailing at night in large sea state. Yeah, if the seas are big... Yeah. And it's a moonless night. It's freaky. Because you can't see the waves. Because you can't see the waves or anything, and it's just you're just like sailing in pitch black, and that's it. Like that's. <laughs> but I've actually learned to really like sailing at night in some ways because it's easier to see other boat traffic yes. because of the lights. Whereas yeah, it's actually easier to spot boats at night than during the day. Ever seen any unexplained lights or objects in the sky? Yes. You have. I don't think I have. I saw probably a UFO. Really? What? No, I don't know what it was, but it was almost, it was like, um, it was like a, it, it was probably like a military exercise. But you know how ducks fly in a V formation? I saw lights moving across the sky in a V formation, fairly close, very fast, and it made no sound, which was what I thought was sus, because I felt like I should have heard a jet blast. Where were we? This was in the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> Where were was, we? We were in the Bahamas. Okay. <laughs> but in the Bermuda Triangle. Ah, got it. Definitely. I thought it was uh, pretty creepy that we saw unexplained depths of like 200 oh, to 100 God. feet under the boat last night. Yes, last night the whale or something was under us. Our depth sounder kept registering 200 feet, 150 feet, 200 feet. As if something were following us, something large enough to trigger making the boat yeah. think that there was ground underneath us for like how long hours uh it was like going off and on yeah but like it would go from like 200 to like 112 so it's like yeah. crazy yeah. yeah probably a whale probably does anybody have an explanation for that submarine just mess with us how does being a pilot help with sailing um i mean you have to be awesome to do both so I think that's probably the main thing. Um, I don't know, helping, I mean, a lot of things. Aerodynamics, just kind of understanding aerodynamics and radios, systems, troubleshooting. I don't, I'd say a lot. There's actually a lot of crossover between flying and sailing and just kind of the training of running through systems, you know, going through any sort of systems class, flying an airplane, learning, okay, if this happened, you know, if this gauge does this, what does it mean? And what are the possibilities and what can you do to fix it? Um, Brett is astoundingly good at troubleshooting. When something breaks, 
he has, I guess I never thought about that coming from aviation, but you have like literal troubleshooting training. But when something breaks, Brent can figure out what's wrong with it very quickly. And a lot of that just comes from experience and him being really good at understanding how systems work. He can, he just understands it really well. But yeah, your, your method that you approach solving something breaking is impressive. Yeah, so I think a lot of that comes is from flying, but I think a lot of it's just because I broke a lot of stuff in my life <laughs> <laughs> that I've had to fix. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the actual sailing, like, I don't feel like you necessarily have a better, like, I don't feel like you're better at it than I am or Iona is. No. So I don't know if it gave you an advantage, but when, with systems, for sure, though. Yeah, but the actual sailing part, I don't know. I feel like I have a little better grasp just on, like, the aerodynamics that's going on, but maybe not. Maybe I just like to think that of myself. Oh, how come Jade and Ayana aren't sisters? Ayana? How come you and Jade are not sisters? There's a lot of reasons why we're not. <laughs> Do you not love her? <laughs> There's also many reasons why we are. Aww, so sweet. <laughs> We've done this one several times, we'll answer it again. Why are we not sleeping in the bow? If you can see this video, how the, how the boat's rocking like this, you extend that by like 30 feet and that nose is going up and down a lot which means if you were sleeping up there you'd be catching air every once in a while as the boat goes down so it, it would be really uncomfortable it is really uncomfortable to be up there okay that was okay. all the that was all the questions i had you had one more though right yeah the question i saw was asking if we are going to sail like live on the boat for the rest of our lives like sail the world forever this is our forever plan and like extension of that, do we have any other like, like what are our long-term plans? I guess it's kind of like the sub summary of some questions I saw. Mm. So first off, like, no, I don't think that we will sail this boat around forever. I think that some people have such a passion for sailing and they get their boat and they sail for years you know they'll cruise for 30 years we've met a lot of people like that i think that's really cool i just don't think that that's ever been like brett and i's tendency i don't feel i don't no. think that we feel like the sailor passion in that way like i think it's really amazing that we're doing this now and we love that we're doing it 100 percent love it but i don't think that we would be satisfied if we gave up other life experiences in the future yeah yeah, I think there's a lot of other things that we want to do in our life beyond just sailing. Yeah. Sailing is a part of what we want to do with our life, not all we want to do in our life. Yeah, exactly. Like, we want this experience, but we want more than just this experience by the end. Yeah. Yeah, so to extend that a little longer, how long do we think we'll sail? Couldn't tell you. Um, you know, what, what do we have next? Couldn't tell you that either. But there is something after this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I still want to go back and get my graduate degree at some point, or at least maybe not like a degree, but study art somewhere from plan. Eventually, we would love to have a homestead. We love the idea of homesteading. Yeah. But like between now and then, I would love to live in a van and dirt bag <laughs> for a summer. Dirt bagging is a term for when you live in a van and you just travel around and rock climb. And this is not not like a nice sprinter van. No, like no, like like a like a van with like a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I think that sounds amazing. I would love to do that. I want. I really would like to do some long uh, through hikes, like three month long hiking with a backpack. You start and, and you you hike, and three months later you're done. I would love to do that. Um, different things like that. But I think the biggest thing too is we like to keep our mind open for different opportunities because even sailing wasn't on our radar. No. Like, we didn't even know this was a thing. Yeah, growing up, yeah, this wasn't like a lifelong dream. Yeah. And I don't want to go fly. I want to fly again. Probably not for a company necessarily, but maybe. And you've always talked about building a plane. And I definitely want to build a plane. Uh, that's like, yeah. Some things I really sure. want to do, I def definitely want to build a plane, a bush plane probably. Not like a Vans or an RV, but yeah. And so there's there's things. We really want to build an overlander. Definitely want to build an overlander. 
kind of just like a go anywhere vehicle. So at what point do we transition from sailing to doing any of those things? Who knows? Yeah. I think we'll sail until sailing is no longer fun or until the other thing seems more fun. Well, and, and to that same thing, are we going to keep YouTubing when we stop sailing and start doing other things? Probably. Couldn't, couldn't tell you, but probably. I mean, I think it really just depends. Yeah, just, yeah, it depends where we're at. It depends if, you know, do we, do we have 15 kids by then? 15. I don't know. I mean, You're we're leaving, need a couple we're leaving options open. Making that happen. Okay. I think the, the next plan that we're working on, like the soonest plan that'll probably happen for us is the homesteading. Maybe not full on, but as soon as we are able to, we would like to build to a plane. Build a plane. As soon as we are able to, we would like to buy the plot of land that we would eventually homestead on and start planting trees. Like even if we're not gonna live there for another 15 years or something, yeah. it would be really good to find the land and buy it and plant the trees for future us, you know? Like planning ahead for older Brett and Jade so that we can one, have One of those, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Like we want to do that for ourselves. We're in 20 years so that we'll have the trees. Yeah, so we're looking for these the, a spot in the world that we can do that that doesn't actually get cold. Yeah. But you can still have lots of fruit trees. Yeah, we really like that. And a lot of the you know the mushrooms and all the yeah. other foraging berries and very small window that we're looking for. Yeah, because I can't handle um, cold cold weather. I don't do well with it. I get really sad. I'm not a winter being. A being. I find no joy in cold weather. Oh, okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I think that was it. I think we've kind of just stretched everybody else out. We're going to keep sailing for a while. Like, this is in the future. But, Way future. Yeah. Oh, baby. Somebody asked if I'm pregnant. That's a no. Oh, okay. I can't answer that. <laughs> no boat babies for us yet. No boat babies. Yet. Yes. Yeah. What was that? I almost lost my headphones. For real? You meow. Look at how close it got. Oh man. That was a close call. That was close. I know his earbud fell out of her ear and rolled and luckily got caught in a, a little strip of teeth. And her response was to meow apparently. She meowed at him. <laughs> got Benny's attention. Alright, good night everybody. Hope you enjoyed today. Why do you always make it sound like you don't want to have kids? Me? Yeah. I didn't. Did I? <laughs> I said we're having 15. <laughs> like, I don't... I'm sorry if you misread that. But... Bloopers. <laughs> Would you mind clicking the record button to turn it off? <laughs>